Up to now, we've been discussing probability. Now let's shift our focus and dive into random variables. This course leans more towards exploring the applications of random variables rather than just probability. Despite its name, it's important to note that a random variable behaves more like a function rather than a variable. Again, a random variable is a function rather than a variable. So what exactly is a function? Simply put, a function takes an input and gives you a corresponding output. Similarly, a random variable takes an input and gives back an output. Now, what do you mean by input and output in the context of a random variable? Well, the output of a random variable is essentially a real value, while the input represents an event. So, in other words, a random variable transforms an event into a real number. Remember our previous example? Events A consist of outcomes with exactly one head. Right? Now, if a random variable were to take events A as its input, it might spit out a value like 0 or 2. Therefore, you can think of a random variable as a function that maps outcomes of a random experiment to real numbers. This idea helps us understand and predict uncertain events by turning them into numbers we can work with. A random variable assigns numerical values to events that occur with certain probabilities. Taking the example of flipping a coin twice, event A represents getting exactly one head. In this case, since there are four possible outcomes in the sample space and two of them belong to event A, the probability of event A is 0.5. This example illustrates how a random variable works. It assigns numerical values to events based on their probabilities. While the definition of a random variable may initially seem a bit complex, think of it this way. We start with an event, and a random variable simply assigns a real value to it. Finally, it's important to note that the possible values a random variable can take are determined probabilistically. Let's explore what it means for values to be determined probabilistically. Imagine a random variable that can take the values 0, 1, 2, and so on. These values are not assigned randomly. Instead, each value corresponds to a specific event. For example, let's say the events corresponding to 0 and 1 are A and B. Suppose the probability of event A is 30% and the probability of event B is 10%. Since the random variable assigns real values to events based on their occurrence, there must also be an event, say event C, mapped with the value 2. Let's assume the probability of event C occurring is 5%. In other words, the probabilities of the random variable returning values of 0, 1, and 2 are 30%, 10%, and 5% respectively. Theoretically, we could define a random variable as a function that returns symbols instead of real numbers. However, for practical applications such as creating formulas, functions, and graphs, using real numbers is essential. If a random variable were to return letters instead of numbers, it would complicate these applications. Therefore, random variables typically take an event as input and output a real number. Now let's consider the definition of a probability distribution. Earlier, I mentioned that a random variable might return values such as 0, 1, and 2. While these are integers, a random variable can indeed return any value within the real numbers. I also mentioned that each value returned has a corresponding probability. For instance, in the previous example, the probability associated with the value 0 was 30%. A probability distribution then maps the values of a random variable to their respective probabilities. And this mapping can be expressed through a table, graph, or mathematical function. Let's revisit the example of flipping a coin twice. We'll denote a random variable x 
as the number of times we get ahead. Since x represents the count of heads, its possible values are 0 with no heads, 1 with only one head, and 2 with both flips resulting in heads. Each of these values corresponds to a specific event. Remember, an event is always defined as a set. For instance, the event associated with zero heads is the set T and T, indicating both flips resulting in tails. Similarly, the event associated with two heads is the set H and H, and lastly, the event associated with one head comprises the outcomes H, T, and TH. Therefore, for every value returned by the random variable, there is a corresponding event. Moreover, for each associated event, there is an associated probability, denoted as f of x, implying that each value is associated with a probability. Given that the size of the sample space is 4, and there is only one outcome in the event associated with 0, the probability of this event is 0.25. Similarly, we can calculate the probabilities associated with other values as well. This table itself embodies the probability distribution. So if you're asked to determine the probability distribution of a random variable, creating a table like this is the way to go. While equations can also be used to represent the same information, both methods are equally effective in conveying the underlying probabilities. Let's dive a bit deeper into the concept of a random variable. Imagine we have a data set consisting of various heights. You could view this data set simply as a list of values stacked vertically, or you could conceptualize it as a random variable. How you approach the data set fundamentally changes depending on this perspective. Now let's say we choose to view height as a random variable. Just like with our previous example of coin flips, a random variable inherently comes with its own probability distribution. Once we've identified that our data set conforms to a particular probability distribution, we can proceed to align our data points with this distribution. This involves fitting our observed data to the expected probabilities outlined by the distribution. By doing so, we can effectively leverage the properties and patterns inherent in the probability distribution to conduct a more insightful analysis of the data set. The characteristics of the distribution can encompass various factors such as the area under the curve, mean, or variance. When we analyze the original data set, we can leverage these properties derived from the distribution. Moreover, although height data are typically collected by individuals, we can approach the data set from a different perspective. Rather than merely viewing the data points as observations, we can conceptualize them as values generated from a random variable characterized by a specific distribution. This distribution has a peak at its center, indicating that values close to the center are more likely to be generated. Consequently, many values in the data set are likely to cluster around the central point. Right? Conversely, if a value such as 2 meters appears in our data set, it's likely to be located near the right end of the distribution. We can also quantify the likelihood of observing particular values within the data set. Consider a scenario where we have a modest data set consisting of only 50 data points. Attempting to determine the probability of encountering a value like 2 meters within such a small data set might seem impractical. However, by treating height as a random variable and analyzing the data set through the lens of the probability distribution that governs this random variable, we can do lots of new things. This approach enables us to conduct hypothesis tests, draw inferences, and perform various statistical analysis. 
Indeed, random variables play a significant role in statistics as they allow us to make meaningful assessments despite limited data. In statistical analysis, it's common practice to regard most data as random variables, forming a fundamental assumption in our analytical frameworks. The perspective that views data points as values generated from random variables is essential in statistical analysis. From now on, whenever we acquire data, we'll adopt a perspective of treating it as a random variable. For example, let's consider data points such as 170 centimeters. If 170 centimeters is close to the average height, it's likely to be located near the peak of the distribution. Consequently, we expect numerous data points clustered around 170 centimeters within the data set. This phenomenon illustrates a fundamental principle. The reason we observe more data points close to 170 centimeters compared to those near 2 meters is due to the underlying probability distribution associated with the random variable. This distribution assigns higher probabilities to values around 170 centimeters, thereby resulting in a greater concentration of data points in this area. Once again, please remember that the random variable is a crucial concept in statistics, and the probability distribution is a function that takes an event as input and returns a real value as output. Additionally, each event is associated with a certain probability. Do you remember the table we created earlier? In that table, each event was mapped to specific values like 0, 1, and 2 and the values were also linked with probabilities.